gas turbines are changing the way we fly, only the gas turbine is light enough and powerful enough for the high-speed aircraft of today. The best known use of the gas turbine is jet But gas turbines are also... All heat engines depend on the same principles. They burn fuel. They change a part of the heat the fuel produces into work. They waste the larger part of the heat in the exhaust. To change heat into work, engines have to use something which expands when heated. The steam engine uses steam. The gas turbine uses air. The change from heat to work can be demonstrated by a simple experiment. Here is a cylinder. One end is closed by a thin plastic diaphragm. Here is fuel. The fuel mixes with the air in the cylinder and burns. The heated air expands and does work. Hot expanding gases pushing against a piston do work and drive a gasoline engine. The push can be changed into rotary movement by a connecting rod and crank. To power continuously, this kind of engine needs a carburetor, an ignition system, valves, and valve operating gear. Power is produced in a series of pushes. The piston is continuously accelerated and stopped. Millions of engines like this are in use throughout the world. They serve us well. But the more power they produce, the more complicated they become. The gas turbine is much simpler. Instead of using the pressure of air, the air is allowed to escape through a nozzle. A bladed wheel is put in the path of the air stream. As the air is heated, it shoots out of the nozzle. Heat energy has been changed into kinetic energy, that is, into movement energy. And the wheel changes movement into torque, or turning power. Here, the supply of air is limited to what the cylinder contains. To produce continuous power, there must be a continuous supply of air. The air has to be supplied under pressure, so a certain amount of work is needed to compress the air. This extra work is more than justified by the increased energy in the stream of air. Gas turbines need a way of compressing air, a way of mixing fuel with the air and burning it, and a way of turning the gas energy produced into work. Here is a typical gas turbine, one for driving a propeller. Take away its starter motor and other accessories so that the three basic parts can be seen. The compressor, the combustion system, and the turbine. This arrangement of the three basic parts in line is the simplest possible. The air is taken in at the front through an intake round the propeller hub. The air goes through guide vanes into the compressor. Gas turbine compressors may be of several kinds. This is an axial compressor. It consists of a number of sets of blades. 
Each set acts like a fan and passes the air on to the next set, and so on, from stage to stage through the compressor. Axial compressors usually have between five and 15 sets of blades. The various sets of moving blades are mounted on the compressor shaft. Between each set of blades and fixed to the outer casing of the compressor, there are sets of stationary blades or stators. These direct the airflow from one moving stage to the next. The guide vanes lead the air at the correct angle into the first stage of the compressor. The moving blades accelerate the air and push it on into the first row of stators. As the air passes through the stators, they slow it down and slightly increase its pressure. The slightly compressed air then goes into the next compressor stage. It is accelerated once more and its pressure again increased as the next row of stators slows it down. Increasing the pressure by small stages is the most efficient way of building up a big compression. This compressor has 10 stages and raises the pressure of the air by seven times. That is, it has a compression ratio of seven to one. As the air is forced through the compressor and its pressure increases, it takes up a smaller and smaller space. The compressed air now enters the combustion system. There are several kinds. All are designed to burn the fuel completely and yet to cause the least possible disturbance to the airflow. In this engine, combustion takes place in six chambers, often called cans, arranged round the engine. Each can has a lining called the flame tube. The fuel is burned inside the flame tube. To obtain complete combustion, the fuel and air must be mixed thoroughly. Here a vaporizer is being used to mix the fuel and air. A typical combustion chamber of the can type uses an atomizer. An atomizer gives a very fine spray of fuel. About one quarter of the air from the compressor is needed for the best air fuel mixture for combustion. The mixture is lighted by a spark plug. Once lit, the mixture burns continuously. The remaining three quarters of the air, the secondary air, passes around the outside of the flame tube and cuts into the middle of the combustion gases through holes. This secondary air has the essential job of cooling the gases of combustion to approximately 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, about the highest temperature at which the turbine can operate. As the fuel-air mixture burns, the hot gases it produces expand. They shoot through the nozzle at great speed. This is where the gas turbine gets its power from a rushing torrent of hot, high-pressure gas. This gas stream has a large amount of kinetic energy. The curved blades of the turbine change the kinetic energy into turning power. Turbines may have different numbers of stages. Industrial sets usually have several to share the load. In aircraft gas turbines, where low weight is important, between one and four stages are commonly used. The turbine is like a compressor in reverse. A compressor works like a fan. A turbine works like a windmill, which takes some of the energy from the wind. The stream of hot gases from the combustion chamber is directed by guide vanes into the first turbine stage. The gases act on the blades with great force and drive the turbine wheel around. They are guided by stators into the next turbine stage. As the gases force their way through the turbine, their pressure and temperature drop. The energy the gases lose in this way is turned into work by the turbine. In this engine, 
the turbine is designed to take the greatest possible amount of energy from the gas stream. The energy is being used to turn a propeller shaft. Apart from auxiliaries, this engine has only one moving part, a smoothly rotating shaft. This shaft links the turbine to the compressor. It is extended forward to drive the propeller. This combination of rotary movement with the smallest possible number of moving parts is the reason for the simplicity and smooth running of gas turbines. Of the total power which the turbine can take from the gas stream rushing through it, about two-thirds are needed to drive the compressor, which keeps the engine running. The remaining third goes to the propeller shaft, which provides the power output of the engine. This layout is typical of the simplest kind of turboprop aircraft engine. Turbojet aircraft have no propellers. As no shaft power is needed, the turbine can be reduced from two stages to one. The smaller turbine produces just enough power to drive the compressor and no more. The rest goes to the jet, which creates thrust. This is the simplest gas turbine of all, but as it stands, it has only one use, aircraft jet propulsion. But gas turbines are also used for surface transportation and industry. For such purposes, a unit similar to a turbojet engine is used. A separate turbine with its own driving shaft is put in the gas stream. This turbine, called the power turbine, takes a large part of the remaining energy from the gas stream and produces the shaft power output of the engine. This layout is typical of the industrial type of gas turbine. Such engines can be used for power generation and for almost any job done by other types of power units. They can also be light portable power units with many applications. They have great advantages for ships. And gas turbine powered locomotives are now in use. Turbine propelled highway transportation may someday become widely accepted. Experimental gas turbine powered cars are already in operation. And indications are that they may have many advantages. In comparison with today's piston engine, the gas turbine will probably be lighter and simpler, with fewer moving parts to require repairs and maintenance. The gas turbine can be made to operate on almost any liquid fuel, from heavy oil to high octane gasoline. But its present usefulness has resulted from the research that produced special turbine fuels and improved engines. Likewise, more extensive use of the gas turbine in the future will depend upon the development of even better turbine fuels, more efficient engine components, and the new and improved materials necessary to utilize its great power. At Wood River, Illinois, Shell Oil Company established many years ago the world's first laboratory for the study of jet fuels. There, scientists are continuing their research toward even better gas turbine fuels for the future. And elsewhere, other scientists and engineers are striving toward the development of still more efficient gas turbine engines and the components and materials which will enable man to utilize their great power. These research efforts 
may bring the future closer. A future which may see more extensive use of the gas turbine. The gas turbine has already conquered the skies and someday it may be the source of power for many other practical and useful purposes. <laughs>